In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy glitch effect using Photoshop's Displace Filter. I've opened up the image I want to glitch, and let me just show you the dimensions of that image so you know what I'm working with. This is a 4000 by 6000, 240 PPI image. It's pretty much straight out of the camera, and it's a pretty high resolution image. And the only reason I point this out is because some of the things that I'm going to show you will vary on how you apply them depending on the size and the resolution of your image. So I just want you to know what I'm working with here. It's a very high resolution image, but you can do the same effects on a smaller image. You would just want to use slightly different settings, and I'll show you that when we get there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a displacement map. If you've never used Photoshop's displace filter, then this might be new to you, but I will walk you through it. So we're going to create an entirely new Photoshop document. And in this case, I want my displacement map to be the same size as the photo I will be displacing. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but it's easier to control when it is. So I'm just going up here, I'm right clicking, and I'm creating a new document. And you should get a dialog something like this. The way that I can create a new document with the exact same settings as the image I'm displacing is fairly simple. I can go to this document type dropdown, and I'm actually going to go down here and you'll notice that it gives you an option to select a document type which matches the open photo in Photoshop. So this is the photo I'm editing. I'm just going to select that. What happens then is it actually creates a new document with the same resolution same settings as the image I'm going to be using it on. That's very convenient, so I'll hit OK. I now have a blank Photoshop document with the same settings, same uh, color space and everything as the image I'm displacing. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be identical, but it makes it a little easier to control. And one thing you should note if you're doing high resolution images especially is that displacement maps have to be 8-bit color. So you see right here where it says RGB slash 8. In the event that it's 16, it will not read as a displacement map when you go to import it currently with Photoshop's capabilities. So what you need to do is go to image mode and make sure it's on 8 bits per channel. This one already is, but I just want to point that out. It'll throw an error if you don't have it on 8 bits per channel. So now we have my image I'm going to glitch and the blank document I'm going to use to create that glitch effect. So basically what I'm going to do is create a black and white document here, which I can use to displace my image here and give me an automatic glitch effect. And I'm going to do that by creating some rectangles because what I want is to get a rectangular displacement, which kind of looks as though maybe like an old TV glitching out where the lines are not in the proper place. So I'm going to get my rectangle tool, that's U on the shortcut, and I have it set to fill black, no stroke, and I'm just going to draw out, click inside and draw out some rectangles. And they can be whatever size you want them. I'm gonna do several different rectangular sizes just to give you an idea of how it will look. Because that will make a difference later on. You may want to go back and change this. So I'm just drawing out a few rectangles in random places to see uh, what I think about this. And then I'll apply it as a displacement map. So there we go. I've drawn out a few rectangles. And now I need to save this file as a Photoshop document. So I'm going to go to File save as. Make sure you do save it as a Photoshop document, not any other sort of doc type. So I'm going to go displace one and hit save. Now I've saved my displace map. Now what I'll do is go over here to the image I want to displace, go up to filter, distort, displace. Now, you're going to be given some options here, and this is where the resolution of your image is going to come into play. So, you will want these numbers to be lower for smaller images and higher for larger images. But for right now, I'm going to use Stretch to Fit, Repeat Edge Pixels, and then I'm going to pick a horizontal scale 
of 45 and a vertical scale of 15. What this is choosing is how far it should displace the image vertically and horizontally, the scale. So I'm going to hit OK. And now it opens me up to select the displace map. So it automatically opens a dialog where I will choose the file which will be used as the displacement map. Here's my displacement map that I just created in Photoshop, and I'm going to open it. Now what happens is it opens this file and it reads the black and white areas of this document and it uses those to map out the displacement on this image. So there we go, I have the displacement in this right here. You'll see is the offset horizontally and then we have an offset vertically as well. So there's just a slight 15 pixel vertical offset and it's primarily a horizontal offset that you see in this displacement. Now, I could have used more extreme settings if I wanted, but that's a good start. However, I don't have to stick with this. I can hit Control Z or go over here to edit and undo and undo that displace. You can also go over here into your history, go back and undo. All right, now that I know how this works, maybe I think I didn't like the way that displacement looked. I'm going to change it. Well, since we have a Photoshop document, we can go back and edit the displacement map at any time. So I'm going to go back. Let me just remove all my rectangles, and I'll show you an alternate way to make even more glitch, and that is to create your own custom brush. So I'm going to, again, draw out some rectangles, but this time I'm going to draw them all tightly cropped together here. And I'm just going to pick some random formations for them. And you can, again, do however you like. Creativity is your only limit here. But I want to create some uh, interesting effects here with this displacement. Now, I'm going to grab my marquee tool. I'm going to grab rectangular marquee tool since I'm marqueeing rectangles. And I'm just going to capture all these inside of a marquee. And then go over here to edit, define brush preset. So I'm going to do that and I'll call it glitch brush one. Now I just created a Photoshop brush. I don't really need all these rectangles now because I'm about to brush all this on. So I'm going to select all these layers. You can select the top one and then hold down shift and select all the layers, delete them. Now I'm going to hit B on my shortcuts to bring up my brush and look what it brought up. Automatically it brings up the most recent brush I created, which is this glitch brush. Now what I can do is actually brush in the glitches at any size that I want. And if I want a little more variation, I can go to my brush menus right over here. If you don't see them on your control panel, just go to Windows and tick the brushes. And it'll bring up your brush controls. So here's my brush controls. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to click the Shape Dynamics. And then I'm going to select Control here to Pin Pressure. And this will control the diameter of my brush. And then angle I could change, but I actually want all of these going mostly horizontal, so that's not a problem. I am going to go down to scattering, and I'm going to scatter them around a bit, and I'm going to jitter the count of them. I'm going to say both axes. Now, what's going to happen is when I brush in, I'm getting a little bit of a variety in where and how the brush is placing them. Now, I selected pen pressure because I'm using a pen tablet, which means that the different pressure sensitivities of the pen tablet allows me to change the size of the brush. Now, if you're just using a mouse, don't worry about the pen uh, pressure sensitivity because the mouse is not going to read that, but you're still going to be able to get some nice glitch effects using this brush. Now, now that I've painted in with black on that brush, I could actually reverse my colors over here and I could paint with white and glitch back out 
some other areas. And that just gives me a little more variation with my glitch. And I'm going to see what this looks like. So now I'm just going to go and save this document. Now we've already uh, used this document for displacement once before. So when I'm back in Photoshop for the image I want to displace, I can actually go up to Filter, and you'll notice that at the very top, it has the last filter I used. And I can reuse that instantly just by hitting Control F, and it'll reuse all the settings. And incidentally, it'll reuse the same displacement map, which is now different because I just saved this new design. So I'm going to hit Control F, and let's see what we get. So there we go. We have more glitch now. A lot more glitch happening in the image. Now I'm going to undo that and show you the difference if you change up some of the settings on the displacement. So what I can do is I can make the horizontal scale more, make it 100, vertical scale 50. And then I'm going to, un on the undefined areas, I'm going to put wrap around. I'm going to choose this displace map again. Let's see what the difference is. Now you're going to notice that because I chose wrap around, uh, it actually displaced uh, the edges as well. So then I don't have clean edges on the side. But that's one of the reasons that previously I chose uh, not to wrap around. But in this case, I wanted you to see what you could get with that. And I also heavily displaced it, so I chose the offset to be quite a bit more, and you'll see a large glitch effect now. In a, so I'm going to actually undo this, go back in, and one more time we're going to displace it. This time I'm going to repeat edge pixels. I'm going to set this down to about 80, vertical scale to about 20, and I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll notice the tile option there. That works really well if you have a displacement map which is not the same size as your image, and you just want to tile the displacement across your image rather than stretching it to fit. So there we go. I have a glitched out image. It's very easy to uh, duplicate your background and do this glitch effect on a duplicate. That way you can actually go in here, if you like using masks, and mask out parts of that so that they are not visible and your glitch only affects certain areas. Now obviously I could have just left certain areas white here uh, or black and that would also control where the glitch affects here on the displacement map. But those are just a couple options that you can use to get a really quick and easy displacement, which is a nice glitchy effect using just the displace filter in Photoshop. And making your custom brush is totally optional. You could do it by hand, making every uh, rectangle, or you could make circles. You could displace with any shape you want. I just chose rectangles. You can use patterns. You can use other images but it's only going to read the black and white areas to know where to displace. So just make sure in your displacement map that you're aware that color doesn't really affect the actual displacement filter. So there you go. It's a simple, easy glitch technique using the display, displacement filter in Photoshop. Enjoy and show me what you make out of it.